Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're going to be talking about 12.1 day two. Um, we're going to continue looking at our limits of functions uh, and estimate them at, as well as estimating them at infinity. Okay, so we're looking at things graphically and in terms of tables here. So we'll start with our first one here. We got looking at each one-sided and two-sided limit if it exists. So first thing is limit as f of x approaches negative one. I, you know what I should do is probably graph this. So when I graph one minus x squared, okay, it's going to go start up here. And if it's x is less than one, I'll put an open circle here, close circle here. And the next one is at one, two, three down here. So I have this little part of a quadratic that goes this way. Then I look at negative x minus one. So that'd be minus one. And then I would normally graph it here, but then I'm going right here, negative x like this. So my piecewise function does that. It's got a quadratic and a linear. So first thing is looking at the limit as x approaches one from the left-hand side of f of x. So from the left-hand side, we can see it's going here and then it's coming here. It's approaching zero. Okay. Then we look at the limit as x approaches one from the right-hand side. Okay, so when I do that, it's coming from here and it's approaching negative two. So graphically, we can see that it's going to two different things, meaning my overall uh, limit of the entire function as x approaches one, this one does not exist. The limit does not exist because we are approaching two different values here. Okay, to help demonstrate this further, let's go ahead and look at the table. We know that at one, we're jumping over between the two. If I plug one in, I would plug in the second one and I get a negative two. So let me look at the right-hand limit real quick. If I go 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, plug these into a calculator, we get negative 2.1, negative 2.01, negative 2.001. So you can see that we are approaching negative two coming from that direction. As we get closer and closer and closer, we are getting to close to negative two. Then I go to the other side. I got like 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. Let's see what happens there. I get a 0 0.19, 0 0.019, or sorry, 199, 0 0.00199. From this direction, we are definitely not approaching negative two. That's us getting closer and closer to zero is what's happening. So again, from a table or a graph, we are able to figure out uh, what's going on with our limits, okay? Let's look at the limit as x approaches two of one over x plus two squared. First thing is, looking at my vertical asymptote, x equals 2. I'm going to go ahead and graph that on here. So obviously, with that being x equals 2, I cannot plug in 2. The vertical asymptote means it's not going to work. So I go to a graph real quick. I plug that. Um, if you were to plug it into a graphing calculator, in fact, we could probably just do that in Desmos real fast. Give me one second here. Okay, so we brought this up right here. So we can see how the graph looks right there. Um, again, this is my vertical asymptote x equals 2. So it's approaching that. You have some values here, like, for example, I think 1, 1. Yep, 1, 1 and 3, 1, just to get a rough idea of the curve. So I come back here. So we know it's going to go here and here. And the graph is going to go like this and like this. Okay. So graphically, we're going to look at how does it, what does it do? As I approach from the left-hand side, I'm going up and up and up and up. As I come from the right-hand side, I'm going up and up and up and up up. So that means I can describe this, the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x minus 2 squared is just equal to infinity because it's going to go up and up forever. And again, we can kind of see that a little bit with our table. We know that it's undefined at 2. So let's look at what happens when I come from the right-hand side, so 2.1. 2.0, oops, too many, 2.01, 2.001. This is 100, this is 10,000, and then this is 1 million. So you can see that as we come from the right-hand side, this is getting whoop, very large here. From the left-hand side, it's 1.9, then 1.99, and 1.999. Yeah, I see the same thing. It's going to be at 100, then 10,000, and then 1 million. So it's going to keep going up and up and up like that. Okay. 
So the limit as X approaches zero of two X cubed, if it exists, or sorry, two over X cubed. So again, pull up a graphing utility and see what happens there. We know that we're gonna have a vertical asymptote at X equals zero, okay? At positive one, well, actually, Positive one would put me up at a two. Negative one would be at negative two. So it looks something like this. Well, notice graphically what's happening here. In order for a limit to exist, it has to be approaching the same thing from both the left-hand and right-hand sides here. In this case, as I approach from the left-hand side, I'm going way, way down to a negative infinity. If I go from the right-hand side, it's going way up to a positive infinity. So what we have to say here is that we are not approaching the same thing from both directions. So the limit as of two over X cubed means that it is does not exist. So the limit does not exist here. And again, you can kind of analyze the, uh, <clears throat> analyze our table real quick. So our table would do something like this where we have from, let's see here, getting close to zero. So we're gonna go 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. We have a thousand and then a million and then one times 10 to the ninth, so a billion. And then from a negative 0.1 to negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, we get a negative 1,000, a negative 1 million, and negative one times 10 to the ninth. So we're getting, so we can see from this direction, we're going to negative infinity. From this direction, we're going to positive infinity. Okay. Again, just something to look at from the table that we understand that. Next one, limit as X approaches zero of X times sine of X. Okay. If you want to see the graph of that real quick, we can do that. We'll do X times the sine, whoops, X times the sine of X. Get some weird looking stuff here. But what I'm concerned about is what's happening as I approach zero. Well, from the left-hand side, Seems to be approaching zero, that seems to be okay. From the right-hand side, also seems to be approaching zero. We pull up a table real quick, we can see this, okay? So if I do the table feature and I plug in my different values for X, like for example, uh, we wanna get closer to zero here. So I might do point, uh, zero. normally I would actually do this. I would probably do point one, point zero one, 0.001, and we see how it's getting closer and closer on that side there, okay? So <clears throat> we're getting close to zero is what we're getting at. This value here, 9.99 times 10 to the negative seventh, which is basically one times 10 to the uh, 10 to the negative eighth, that is really close to zero, okay? So when I come back here, now I want to fill in my table, at zero, it equals zero, at a 0.1 to 0.01 to 0 0.001. I plug these in, I had a 0 0.00998. Then I have, basically I rounded off with the one times 10 to the negative six, one times 10 to the negative eight. From the other side, <clears throat> we got negative 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001. We got the symmetry there, 0 0.00998. 1 times 10 to the negative 6, and then 1 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, we are getting closer and closer to 0 with this one. Let's try another one. This one we're saying as x approaches infinity. Okay, so I'm just going to go right to the number. Well, you know, let's see the graph real quick. 1 over x plus 1. So 1 over x plus 1. So the idea is that what's happening as it goes on this way, it goes on and on and on forever. <clears throat> so we can see that there. If I go to my table feature. We can see that if I'm going towards one, two, we'll go up to, I don't want to go to three, let's go to 10. And then I can go to 100, 1,000, actually to 10,000. But bottom line, you get the picture here. If I just keep adding zeros, eventually I'm going to get to approaching one. And that's what we're looking for, okay? So that means that the if I plug in one, that was a two, 10 give me a 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, 1.0001, 1 and then 1.0001. You notice how we keep going as we approach infinity? 
the function one over X plus one is just equal to one. So we're just looking at that behavior overall, okay? I'm not gonna graph this one, I'm just gonna go right to the table. Again, use the graphing and table to help you on this one. So one over X cubed minus one. We plug in one for X, we get zero. Plug in a 10, we get a negative 0.999. And then we get a negative 0 0.9999. It looks like one, two, three, four. And then we're basically getting at negative one. It's getting so close that we just call it negative one at that point. So again, the idea is that the limit as X approaches infinity of one over X cubed minus one is just equal to negative one. Okay. Let's see here. We got just a couple more examples to go. Limit as x approaches infinity of just cosine of x. Well, remember what the cosine function looks like. Cosine looks like this. It's going to go up and down and up. It's going to oscillate like that. Okay? So it does not seem to have an, a value that it's be approaching. And let's confirm that by plugging these in. So we can do cosine of 1 pi. That's equal to a negative 1. 10 pi is equal to 1. And then 99 pi is negative 1. And then 1. The negative 1. And then 1 again. Again, I'm using a graphing or... Uh, table feature here. So the idea is that because I'm not approaching a unique value, I'm oscillating between one and negative one here. Well, that means the limit as X approaches infinity of cosine of X does not exist. Okay. All right. Uh, last one today. The growth of a certain bacteria can be modeled by the logistic growth function. B of T equals this, where T represents time and hours. Estimate the limit of B of T if it exists, interpret your results, okay? So the idea here is understanding what's going on with the logistic problem. Now, if I just start plugging in my numbers here, just to kind of evaluate what's happening when I go off to infinity, we have 8.989, we have 505.76, and then we just basically get 675. Again, I'm getting this from my calculator. It's just getting me really, really close to that. We might as well just call it 675 at that point. So what's happening here? The limit of as t approaches infinity of b of t is just equal to 675. Whoops. Is equal to 675. Okay. The reason why is because this is what's called a carrying capacity with a logistic growth function. This value up here tells us this. If that's 675, this is how the growth looks. It looks something like that kind of a sideways looking S curve. Okay. I mean, yeah, it looks like an S curve there. So we are approaching 675. Okay. So that's my carrying capacity C equals 675 here, which is why my limit as we approach infinity is equal to the same thing. Okay. And that is it for today. Again, we are looking at our different... Um, different types of limits and how we can evaluate them using our graphs, as well as a table here and seeing some special cases and how things might not work out just right. All right. But that's it for today. Take care, everyone.